and they have been forced to wind down their business as WOTC because of these tactics. Um, so they're not permitted to do business there, but they try to do permitting. They try to do business here in the states. That's why they are now targeting American brands and American designers. So if I calculate that in the venue, if I fell for it and went all the way through, it would have been well over two hundred fifty thousand pounds. Wow. If I didn't catch it, I caught it. And this is what happens. She is still right now at this very moment thinking that I'm going to come up with the rest of that money. I then got a phone call from Marion. Marie is the name she's using here. Um, she says that her name is Marie. She's representing WOTC magazine. Oh. So you didn't only just want to take money from me. You wanted to destroy me in business. You get what I'm saying? Like, just because you want to go buy another Birkin bag, you a bum. <laughs> You're a bum. It... Patrice, so how are you? How is everything going with you today? I'm good. It is a busy day. Busy um, day. On Monday, but it's not. <laughs> so for those How who are you? watching this, um, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Latrice uh, got in contact with me based on a venture uh, with Maria Mola, who goes by the name, which went wrong. And of course, you know, she fell victim to a major scam and she wanted to do a converse, have a conversation or an interview somewhere. Um, and I was, you know, happily open to having this interview discussion with her. And so just to give Latrice a platform to discuss her pain, um, you know, uh, endurance throughout this and to help and prevent other people falling for the same trap, basically. So Latrice, where are you from? And what is your story? Yeah, sure. So I am located in the United States. Um, originally from New York, and um, I obviously uh, traveled over to the West Coast. Uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now. Um, and among my career, I, I travel a lot to Europe uh, within my fashion brand. I have a lingerie uh, brand, and um, upon doing the show once, um, I decided after the show and how the production and everything went, I came up with a business model to do fashion show production. So I came up with the idea for um, pretty practical fashion production. Um, so that's pretty much where we would use our platform for showcasing other designers, um, locating very high in elite niche venues um, and accommodating them with a different experience, um, particularly catering to designers like accommodations for lodging, things that we miss with traditional fashion shows, right? So I came up with that idea. Fast forward a little bit. Um, I got contacted through my business page on Instagram from my lingerie brand um, from someone from WOTC magazine. And they were interested in me and in saying, uh, you know, my page looks great. My brand is amazing. And we would love to have you as a feature in the magazine. And there is a cost associated with it, which is, of course, you know, you're familiar with that. You're in this business, right? So I'm like, oh, that's fine, of course, especially in Europe. You know, I'm trying to make a splash out there. I I, I love Europe. You know, France is my country of choice. But but either way, you know, I, I said it would be a really good opportunity. And so I researched, saw the website, looked great. Um, I saw a very prominent um business owner from the States on a cover of, uh, you know, people I've seen on the covers are very familiar. So um, it's a little windy here, but it feels good guys. Cause Arizona is hot. <laughs> um, but um, I was like, okay, it's legit. Looks legit. Looks great. Um, let's do it. So in, in conversation, um, the initial contact was not from Mariam. It was from someone else representing the magazine. I then got a phone call from Mariam. Marie is the name she's using here. Um, she says that her name is Marie. She's representing WOTC magazine. She wanted to get a little overview on me and pretty much uh, same thing I'm doing here, introducing myself. Told her about my brand, told her about my my plan um, in, in expanding into fashion show production. And she said, whoa, 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 hold on. That is a phenomenal idea. We need to boost you up to a cover. And so now it's a cost associated with that and it's a different price. And I said, oh, well, people pay this much for magazine covers and this and a third. I'm going to give you the screaming deal. I'm like, okay, great. You know, I, I've had my models on covers before. You know what I mean? It's like no big deal, but this is me breaking into another side of business. So I thought it was a wonderful opportunity. Why not invest in that? 
right? right? So I, I went ahead and did that. The, the The publication seemed reputable. Again, I'm in the States, guys. I'm not in London. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Um, you do have a responsibility for due diligence. I do understand that. But when I see someone that's familiar from my hometown and they're doing business with them, you automatically are just like, okay, this is cool, you know? Um, and, and and that's how I got sucked in, to, to be quite frank. And, and she's very strategic in doing that because it will attract a certain type of audience, you know, because there's someone familiar. There's, you know, um, so fast forward, we went ahead and discussed that. Um, she said, good, you know, I'm going to have someone call you. Let me send you an email, answer your questions for your interview. Fine, perfect, done that. Um, she reaches out to me again, and this is, I'm telling you, intense contact. She was t- calling me, texting me so often, mm-hmm. right? So um, I get the text um, from from Phaedra or, or whoever her assistant was at the time, um, did my interview, and um, Marie said, well, what, what are you doing? Or she asked how what I had planned or something. And I said, well, I'm heading actually to to France because I had a meeting with a venue because I was planning to do my show um, in, in Versailles. That was my model. My business model was to take fashion outside of Paris um, during Fashion Week and to have a showcase in Versailles to kind of give it a different twist, a different feel, a different, a different avenue for, for designers. Um, and I'm like, why the heck, besides beautiful, why is no one doing this, right? Fast forward, I got a response back from a property that is very close to the palace of Versailles. So I'm like, well, this is crazy, crazy marketing. Like who wouldn't want to be in such a, a regal environment, right? So I told her about this and she says, that's great. She says, well, if you're going to France, I can have some of the girls meet you. Why don't you do your photo, your photo shoot in London? I said, okay, fine. She's like, you can do your cover story and everything in London. I said, great. So I I do need to be back in France by Sunday because I have to do my campaign shoot for my lingerie. Oh no, you should do just everything here in one one shot. I've got a fantastic guy. He's done Vogue. He's done this, this, this. He can do all of this for you. We can get models. We can get everything. Just do it all here in London. And I said, well, I've never been to London. I'm here in France. I got an extra three days. Why not? Right? Bad move. Because I almost ruined relationships in France because I pulled my entire campaign shoot and shifted everything to London. Mm. Right? So I did that. The photo shoot went great. There were some hiccups with a few things. There were a, a few components that I was promised that I didn't see. Like there was a different car. There's, you know, little nuances that you do when you're in this business. Right? So um, it went great. I left. I went back to France. She reached out to me. Um, actually, let's fast, let's back what backtrack a little bit. After the photo shoot, she came to get me. She wanted to show me around London because I'm the newbie, right? So then we start. She's like, I want to show you some beautiful places in London for fashion show. And I'm thinking in my head, girl, I got Versailles. You know what I mean? Like I'm thinking in my head, but Versailles is expensive, right? So I'm thinking, well, maybe I can circle back. I could do something in London. She's ranting and raving about London Fashion Week and blah, blah, blah. And all this is a huge thing. It's a different animal, all this stuff. And she's so persuasive. So she takes me to uh, Satya Gallery. And I'm like, oh my God, this building is enormous. It's huge. I'm already thinking with my creative mind, you know, the entrance alone is just like, I can do like a mini cons. Like I could do red carpet here, boom, boom, boom. Right. You know, just thinking. And she's like, we can get this for you. The magazine will vouch for you. We'll put a bid in and we can get it, but we got to get a deposit. We got to get this, got to get that. And it was like so much pressure to get her a certain amount of money. I mean, she was trying to get money out of me before I even left Europe to come back to the States. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened is I ended up saying, okay, let's do Saatchi. And then I'll circle back around to France. So we started to build this intense rapport with each other. She introduced me to an affiliate of Goodness Sampson, who's in charge of This Is Revolt. She said that she would be assigned to me to handle all my PR for the show, and I would need to pay her an invoice for her providing designers list, uh, PR for the show, social media, um, you know, all of these things. She's got VIP lists for um, 
publishers and, 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 and manufacturers and VIP guests, celebrities, all these people that she says she knows. 20 grand. Wow. Okay, let's split it in half. Let's do this. Let's do that. And for me, I'm like, this is a show. It costs money to do a show. I don't want to do this. I want to outsource it anyway. You, if you're a boss, you have to pay things, right? So mm. I'm like, okay, fine. No problem. She's like, hey, I've got I've got Seth. She's going to help you out with all of your stuff. I'm literally building a team for you, Atreus. And I'm like, this is wonderful. This is what I wanted because I would have had to do this in France, mm. right? So everything sounds so legit. We are now two months um, after the initial photo shoot. I have not gotten my images for my campaign shoot. I got maybe like a clip of a video, a few edited images, but I haven't gotten the full amount. I'm on people's heads. Like one thing about me, I'm very good in leadership. Um, you know, my significant other is very, very good in leadership. I am not a micromanager, okay? I give you free range. If that is your specialty and that's your area, I'm expecting you to follow through with it. I'm not going to be on the phone. Like I'm not an authority. Uh, I'm not an authority junkie. You mm. know what I mean with some people like that. And, and I think that's better the way that people work. So I let time go by and things I started to see were not getting done. And what was the main concern was a press release. A press release for a fashion show needs to be rolled out at a certain amount of time in order to gain traction, obviously, and to get the designers on board. Um, they structured the press release to be at exactly a day, the second half of the deposit for the venue was due without them getting any traction for designers. And I noticed that. And I raised that issue numerous times in our weekly meetings. Weekly meetings were, were okay that we would have Wednesdays to go over things. Bottom line is, I'm not gonna drag this too long, but the bottom line is there were red flag signs showing me that they probably were not capable of acquiring the level of designers that I needed within that specified time frame, and that I would be liable for coming up with that big portion for that venue to secure without retrieving any money back coming in from designers, which is the whole purpose of doing business, right? You pay a percentage on your venue, secure it, promote your show, get designers on board. When they sign up, then you will use those fundings to help produce the show. That's just the way the business works. Well, no designers have come in and they expect me to come up with the other half of the venue. And we're talking about 120,000 pounds, guys. Wow. Okay, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, you know, luckily I have, I'm in a position where I can calculate the loss. Um, it, it hasn't been the full 120,000 um, for the for the venue. But if I tally up everything with Seth and this is Revolt and all these other people in the magazine and stuff, it comes to a close about that amount. So if I calculate that in the venue, if I fell for it and went all the way through, it would have been well over 250,000 pounds. Wow. If I didn't catch it, I caught it. And this is what happens. She is still right now at this very moment thinking that I'm going to come up with the rest of that money and pay her for this venue. This well, is fast forward, well, fast forward to the fact that I went, when these red flags started to emerge with my team here, I went into due diligence to contact the gallery directly. And I asked about my date. I asked if there was anything secured in the diary for my fashion show. They said they had no idea. The date is open. They had no idea and that they have not received any funding. So I have sent a deposit over and wire transfer for securing a venue and I have nothing. Wow. She is still communicating with me as if they have put deposits down. Everything is we're, you know, going over set plans, set design, all this stuff. She has no idea. No, you have to play a narcissist on their own game. Right. And for me, I feel like, you know, obviously she's a bum. You're not going to get the money back. But the bruise, the darkest bruise that I can give her is to her ego. That you did not beat me. You didn't get me all the way through. You didn't get me. You didn't tarnish my name. You didn't tarnish my business. I pulled out. I pulled the plug on you first before you got the money and pulled the plug on me. Right. And, and I was lucky. But there are a lot of people when I reached out and got into communication with uh, this Instagram group and these people that are these victims, they they weren't so lucky, you know, and, and they follow through. Some of them have smaller amounts that they were taking a ride for. Some people have larger amounts, I've heard. Someone got taken for like 550K. I mean, it's it's crazy. 
But for the most part, my mission is to not let this happen to someone else. And also, the biggest thing, don't come to America with that shit. Don't come to America with that shit. We don't play. You don't play anywhere else. I'm telling you, it's wrong whatever you're doing, but you do not do that shit here. It is not a game over here. You know, so, um, you know, I just, uh, and it, it really irritates me to the point where you have these young girls that you're recruiting underneath you and they they pedestal you. And and one of the things of, of how I got into the business that I wanted to do is because I, I was a young girl. I was, you know, aspiring, trying to get here, get that. You can take it for a ride. You got guys in the industry, you got this, you got that. If you're going to be a role model, be an authentic one. You know, don't use your influence for negativity and get these girls saying that they're going to do PR work. You're going to help them, you know, cultivate a career when you're really using them to open up accounts for you to to mask what you're really doing. Right. Right. And and that is to con people and swindle them out of their money and for you to obtain financial benefit from it. And these girls you know, I'm not saying that they're innocent either. Some of them are along with the game. They know what they know what it is. They know what time it is. Some of them, one in which I met, and after watching um, some documentaries uh, on on online, which is how I met you, Murad. Wonderful. Um, I was blown away. I had no idea who Miriam was. I didn't even know her story. I didn't know she wrote a book. I didn't know anything. I just thought she was an employee of a bigger publication, which is WOTC Magazine. I never even knew she was a, her own entity at all until I started to go online. So I see she has a website. I see she's written a book. She tried to spin her story of, of you know, things that happened to her in the past. Um, and I don't judge people for their past. Everybody's got a past, you know right. what I mean? And if you want to spin it and make a positive, kudos that is dope i think it's so cool right and do it be, be real about it right but you're not being real about it you're still doing the same, same stuff and and you you're masking it and you've got these girls thinking i swear when i when i talked to seth yesterday because they went to the gallery and they did not allow them in and one of the uh you know the reps of the gallery said yeah you know we spoke to latrice directly and of course, I played it off. I said, oh, I don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea, you know, to play along with the game. Um, and she said, can you, I wanted to call you by myself because I, I wanted to see what was happening. And I can tell that, A, she was either trying to fish for Marie or she was really like, she didn't know what the hell was happening. And it was like, how do you gauge this, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided not to, you know, spill the beans to her because I still got Marie on a leash right now. You know, um, but uh, Miriam, sorry, right? I have one right now. And so, on, in the group, in the Instagram group, it, they were talking about how she's affiliated with this other group and all this stuff. And and, and I mean, it is 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 a big rabbit hole, and um, that's just not something that I want to get associated with. I do not want my brand, my business, anything associated with. My goal here today is to just notify any young designer, anybody, if you get contacted by anybody from this magazine, because now they're operating under the W magazine. Oh, they changed the name. Oh, yes. From oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they have been forced to wind down their business as WOTC because of these tactics. Um, so they're not permitted to do business there, but they try to do permitted, they try to do business here in the States. Okay. That's why they are now targeting American brands and American designers. I have her on a phone conversation telling me about all of these prominent brands here in America that she's going to have come and attend my show. Now I know for a fact they're not coming here to my show. They don't they don't know about my show. And I'm sitting here like some of them I know. Right. And it's just like this woman is just really going to the end of the earth over this cliff to think I'm going to give her this money. And it, it's terrible. And it's like you know, you want to go to the the people that she's mentioning and saying, hey, you know, do you know this person is, but you don't want to look crazy. Right. You know, what I mean? you don't want to put yourself out there. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about, Latrice? You know what I mean? So you, a lot of people, I can tell some victims, they went under a rock because they didn't want to seem like they didn't have their business sense. And I thought about that, too. I even thought about maybe backing out of doing this with you, Mariah, because I said, well, how would this make me look? 
It'll make me look, you know, maybe I don't have due diligence. Maybe I, I'm not as competent in business, but that's not the case. Right. The case is when someone presents themselves to you as a, a reputable business owner in a publication and you're not from that place, yes, you should have someone doing these things. And I did. They had it so solid that it was like convincing, you know? And I'm not trying to victimize myself. It, it comes all the time. I mean, this ain't the first time I got scammed. It, it won't be, you know, people people try to pull one on you all the time, you know? But, but the main thing is when I saw that these were young girls, Mm. that pissed me off that pissed me off because I work with young girls all the time I've got young girls that model I've got young girls that that want to do photography I've got young girls that design and, and they're all a one no one's trying to take them and, and do bullshit I mean it's just so many predators out here already and you're a woman doing this shit no it's scary it's yeah. pretty scary I mean I commend you to speaking out it's not easy because you know you're dealing no, with the people problem. might be like, oh, she's looking crazy and all this, but you know, I really don't care. I if if I'm gonna stop another 20 or 17 year old from running into her and and letting her like convince them, oh, you're gonna do this, this, and this, opening accounts, doing all this kind of crazy shit, then I would rather do that. I right. mean, this girl is running around London like she is Paris Hilton or something. Like, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, when you're around people that got it. They smell you. You feel me? Like it's, they smell you. Sorry, a little bit of the New York came out, but it's they. Come on, right. I smell you. Right. You know, and um, she is really she doesn't know how to take me. You know, she doesn't know how to take me. So right now, I'm deciding on um, you know the, the recourse on you know what it is, but for the main part, you know, I'm I'm working with financial institutions that they open the accounts with because here's where she slipped up. The accounts are American accounts. She had these women open them online that where I'm wiring them to. They're American accounts. So, I mean, but you're not who you say you are and you have people wiring stuff to American accounts. So, I mean, whatever she did in London is different, but in America, that's different, you know? Right. We, we relate very differently here. So I think that she thinks that she won't get caught on anything. But, you know, that's for them to find out. That's for them to deal with. You know, I'm just I'm just doing this to let women know, don't associate with it. So run, they clear away. In total, how much was she able to scam from you? Just to clarify. I would say it would be like close to like maybe 80K, maybe. For the venue itself, it was 60. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. I mean, it seems like such a premeditated attack and, you know, it's just oh, yeah. the mental trauma of that mm -hmm. as well, trusting somebody. And yeah, you know, you got to hold yourself, as you said, about doing due diligence and, you know, how people might feel you might come across. But at the same time, you're still entitled to feel betrayed. You're a victim of being scammed so heavily. Oh, no. Yeah, I beat myself up. I beat the crap out of myself. But... For the most part, I caught it so early. And that's why I'm feeling great. I'm right. feeling great right now. I'm out here. Sun, wind's blowing. I'm good. Posh is still popping. It is what it is. She has not stopped the train. But I'm thinking about the girls that didn't. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, and you what about the girls money. that... Yeah. <laughs> like, what about the girls that gave her her life savings? Or the girl that took out loans? Or, you know, or or you know, like... The girl that got evicted or uh, like it's you know what i'm saying it's and they're it's still suffering so today terrible. people forget but they're still suffering today and how they like, are so much money so and then, the, the mental thing about it is when someone takes something that you're super passionate about and it's your dream that's the bigger robbery you know what i mean that's the bigger robbery it's like you took something that you really really love you dangled it as a carrot in front of someone and you snatched it back that right. sucks Bad, you know what I mean? It's like you use what I love to like come on. That 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 is my pet peeve. Like, don't do that. Don't do you that. You know, don't do that. So um, I don't want another girl's dreams getting crushed, or she gets deterred from her dream and she hates what she loves now 
because a scumbag came and did that to you. You know what I mean? Like, don't give up on yourself. That's my biggest message from this. Don't give up on yourself. Do not stop what you are intended to do, what you set out to do. Keep your goals the same and just move forward. It's a learning experience. Move forward from it. Um, that's what I did. And I just wanted to take the time out to, to help stop it from someone else. So when was the timeline of this? When does this take place? Was this recently, last year, this year? When, when I was the- recently. Always recently. So um, in, in my findings um, with, with a legal partner of mine, friend of mine, that they were incorporated um, maybe about two years ago or so. Um, and then they had the order, the court order to wind down in uh, 2022. Okay. And she ran, she met me in January of 23. Okay. And so I'm- she was still operating under the same name with that court order active. Wow. Wow. So when you came across the fact that there were other victims, how were you feeling when you were beginning to put pieces together of the puzzle um, and the fact that you were being scammed and that you weren't the only one and that you had seen other people, what were you going through in that moment mentally? You know what the number one thing for me was? How are the people that are very substantial in the industry feeling about it? Like, how did they not know? And then how how is that their their covers and all this stuff is still being presented and they haven't gotten their team or someone else involved to disassociate themselves? Right. I started to think about that because I'm like, okay, is this all intertwined? Are you guys in on it? Like, what is, you know what I mean? I don't want to walk around like Thelma from Scooby-Doo. Like, you know what I mean? Start investigating people. But at the same time, it's like, if you are a higher celebrity and you're in that position, because here's the thing, I'm not a celebrity. I just got access to stuff, right? To, to You know, because I work hard, you yeah. know? Um, but if I'm doing due diligence and I'm not on TV, I'm not on any of this, you have this team, this powerful team behind you. You're on TV, you're this, you, you don't know? Scary. Everything about this woman is like so strategic, like the look, the clothes. First of all, she's a label whore, like labels everywhere. I was like, okay, that should have been a red flag for me. It was like, because you don't know fashion. (laughs) If you knew fashion, you wouldn't have to have a label on every single thing that you wear, right? Um, So the girls that she, they all like look the same. As I started to filter through online about you know, her affiliation and, and that craziness that she's with, these girls, the young girls, all look the same. They're like robots. They're like same hairdo, makeup painted the same, photo shoots are the same studio, the same makeup girl is doing your makeup, the same hairstylist is doing your hairstyle. All the people that got scammed have probably met the same providers. So she's got this set like an assembly line. I'm, I'm like, girl, <laughs> if you did it positively it would have been great it would have been it would have been perfect but she's being negative about it so it, it's really really bad but the thing that blew me away is when I ran across the BBC special and that's when my jaw hit the ground I'm like wait I sat down and had dinner with this lady like you know what I mean like that's what got me mad like you do not sit at the table. I don't break bread with people like you. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just, no. I was like, no. At that point, it wasn't even about the money. It was just like, your know, your core is just, is just trash. You know what I mean? Like, your core is just trash. You are really out here trying to flip your story around. Like, I did this. I came from a... Yeah, people have come from that. I came from a, a hard background and all that, too. Right. And people mm-hmm. evolve in life. It's called life. You evolve. You evolve. You move forward. You know? But you make it like this thing. I mean, come on. You know, I'm a cancer survivor. I mean, part of that was in my story. It was like, that's how I got into doing, you know, my, my lingerie in my online store. No, It was like therapy for me through treatments and stuff like that. And then you move on. Like, you know what I mean? You don't you don't harp over it and you try to cultivate this whole 
thing. Like I'm this reborn person and now I'm seeing that she's a pastor and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, girl, you robbing people. <laughs> Left, right, center. Yeah. It's like, so I, and when I saw that BBC in, um documentary, I was just like, wow, this is crazy. Like, and I, you know, I started to follow through in other documentaries that I'm seeing. I'm seeing how aggressive she is when she's on video and just like, and I'm like, this is this lady? Like, you know, I have never seen that side because she know not to go there with me. You know what I mean? But it's just, it, it it's crazy. I'm like, is this the same person? <laughs> like, you know, is this the same person? It can't be. Right. Um, but um it's just it, it it's crazy uh, to say the least um but the girls i mean that was a thing for me it was like you got these young 22 23 26 year old girls and i could tell even the one that i was talking to i, I could just tell like she was just sucked in and she didn't know what was going on so you spoke with some of the victims uh i spoke to one of the victims via instagram um, they exchanged some messages, and she was the one who introduced me to the BBC documentary. Okay. Yeah. And then I watched it, and then I found you, because I started going down a rabbit hole, um, eating snacks late at night. Right. <laughs> it's just crazy, because when you re did reach out, I was just like, is this still happening? Like, I had no idea if this was still going on. I don't think she a lot of people... Out. I think yeah, she, she, reinvented. she reinvented herself again, once again. Um, you know... They say cat has nine lives or, or whatever, but uh, not snakes. <laughs> yeah, she definitely, I think there's a reinvention that took place and also a reinvention of location um, and different people to go to because I don't think anybody in London is just even aware that this is still going on, that there are still more victims. You know, after an entire documentary and there are multiple victims who spoke out about it, about the fraudulent claims and money robbed and life savings and been homeless, eviction. It's so, it's so terrible because they're still living through those impacts. They're still experiencing it 45 years on. We had thought it had stopped. Well, for my assumption, I thought it had stopped, but it's still going on. And 80,000 might not be a lot to you, but it might be a huge amount to X, Y, Z, or, you know, it's a huge amount regardless, but still like for those who may not be as successful as you, you know, it could still be like, as you said, life savings and et cetera. So, you know, maybe there are more people just like you over in America who are experiencing similar like who knows it's really scary so i do commend you for coming forward wanting to tell your story because it could even even if it helps one person to just be more aware then i feel like you've done your job but it's extremely traumatic mentally to go through something like this i mean it's like it's you just be over it every day thinking this is what's really good like it's really mentally it takes a toll. I, 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 I think for me is the main thing is that she is so cocky and and the ego that she possesses where she's like oh well i'm just going to target this place now you know what i mean because i mean i read that she got locked up in like spain and then in in all these other places and stuff like that people have like i said people have past i'm not judging nobody everybody got shit with them right but right. I mean, everybody has a past but like if you're able to just put that away ego is just off finish. the chain like she is right. just doing the most you know what i mean like and she's like trying to come to america with that shit I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm like, yo, you really running, yo, shorty is wilding. Like, she is definitely wilding. And I'm like, you got the right one. And you in the right place. Because <laughs> nobody in, 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 in America is going to sit here and let you run wild like that. And it, it's funny, because I'm like, I asked her one time when we were out, I said, hey, have you ever been in New York? And she's like, no, no, I've never been. Now, I don't know if she's lying or not, but I'm thinking now, right now, I'm thinking like, I know you haven't been there. <laughs> right. Not doing this. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, not not to, you know, not to, not to, you know, segregate anything to a geographical location, but I just know that it's a ground that she's covered and maybe it's too hot for her right now. And so that's why she's trying to trickle her way. I honestly feel if there's no other victims that come out from over here, I feel that maybe I was the test run for here, you know, um, and, and replaying some conversations that I've had with her. 
you know, she's like, this has to be good, successful. This has to be good because I can have the next four, five, six, seven Latrices. And this is that and the third. Like, you know, I was I was the muse. I was the model. I was the, the blueprint, right? right? But she failed. She failed miserably. And that is what's going to take her down, her ego, because she cannot fail. Right. She's been so successful in scamming people to the very end that her her cockiness is what's going to be her demise. Right. Because as you said, everybody has a pause. And if her pause was to scam people and she wants to spin it, something positive, that's great. But clearly, evidently, it's still going on and to heavy amounts in just different locations. So, I mean, I'm... I'm She's doing this to live a lifestyle. And, and that's the thing. That's, that's so whack. Like, you sitting here doing this just to, you know post pics on the gram or drive this car or do this or attract this person attract but for what what are you gaining what are you gaining from that to attract more more victims to come right. under your wing and teach them the same thing like okay so then you got all this money you driving a bentley you driving okay and and next you know what i'm saying it's like what what, what are you really getting out of that if, if that's your lifelong goal to flex then i feel sorry for you you know what i mean it's like if that's your joy, I get joy from walking outside. I get joy from fresh air. I get joy from, I'm not going to sit here in front. I like nice stuff. You know what I mean? I like nice stuff. I like nice house. I like a nice car. I like nice clothes. I like to travel. I like, Yes, we're human. We like to do that. But when you are so obsessed with it, where you have to go commit like hard body crimes and then getting other people in it, like something's wrong with you. That's a mental disorder. And she is like, definitely narcissistic personality disorder sociopath like all of that <laughs> you know what i mean and just like and, and and with that being said um the fact that she couldn't get me to come out my pocket full blown with everything and i stopped this show stopped in her track stopped her plan a diabolical plan of trying to conquer america okay mariam columbus um and it's it, it's gonna kill her it's going to kill her. She returned to the scene of the crime. She called me this morning. What was she saying? Latrice, let me know when you have a minute to speak this afternoon. Why am I talking to you? Because you just sent goodness to the to the gallery and they wouldn't let her in. And they told you they weren't letting you in because she talked to me. So you know you got caught. What could you possibly say to me? Right. To try to reel you back in. I pulled the plug on you. I turned your water off. What are you gonna what are you gonna say to me? <laughs> not the water being off. I would I would go under a rock and hide. Like, why are you calling me? You're not legitimate. The people said that this contract was so fake. They said it was a copy and paste. She sent me a, a contract for the gallery with this amount and payments and all that stuff on it. And I sent it to the gallery. And I said, please review this and get back to me. But Teresa, this is not our document. And stipulations in this contract is not even stuff that coincides with our venue. Wow. We don't have an outside area. What do you mean that no outside music can be played after this certain amount of time? We don't even have that here. So she doesn't even have good people to make a good fake contract. <laughs> wow. She's sloppy. It's terrible. And it is like, so you sent me a fake contract. You sent me a fake contract to this place. She said, "No, this is not our. This is not ours. I'm, I've got it on. I've got it on video and on on phone." And she sent me the 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 lady from Sachi Gallery sent me an email. Document. I said, "Can you please send it in writing?" She documented and confirmed that that is not their contract. They have no business dealing with my group and any booking for a fashion show there. So now, what if I went crazy hard and started going? Uh -uh. I mean, I talked to some people, you know, there's a little bit of stuff, you know, out, but it's not full blown, hard body. Like, I'm not damaged. You know what I mean? I can still go back to my life, I can still conduct my business. But what if I really went crazy? With everywhere, everywhere. Oh, we're having a show at the gallery. And I gave her money. And I flew people to London. 
and designers are flying in. And what were you going to say to me? Right. It was going to fall on me. She would have got the bag and I would have been left looking crazy. Hit two times. One, financially. Two, my business would be in the mud. Because now I've taken all this money from people, did all this stuff, and there is no product, no no product, no nothing. So I couldn't even go back to redeem myself. So you didn't only just want to take money from me, you wanted to destroy me in business. You get what I'm saying? Like, just because you want to go buy another Birkin bag, you a bum. <laughs> You're a bum. Because if you were so spectacular, you, you would be able to provide that for yourself. Or you would be with someone that could want to give that to you because right. you're right. <laughs> right. You have- so yeah, she pitched a reality show to me wow. also. She said that um, that they would be um, pretty much um, following women that are in business, in, in, in different variations of business. And um, I would be very interesting because I would be an American doing business in London. Um, hence my show at this gallery that she made a fake contract for and um and 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 didn't book any date for so they were supposed to follow me and shooting began and all of this and she even tried to get me to coerce um some people that I, I work with here um to to help with marketing there was a marketing budget of about eighty thousand that they needed in order to get on cabs and billboards and things throughout the city because they were so interested in me doing the reality show. Wow. So what it was, it was like, it was supposed to be one lick after the other that she was supposed to hit on me. She was supposed to get that out of me. She was supposed to get the show money out of me, the video shoot and the magazine covers and all this stuff. And she was going to hit me for up for all of it. So she had a she had big bank on 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 the top of my head. That's what it was, <laughs> big bank, you know. And um, she was like, she pitched it to me, and she's like, you know, your reality show, you have to get this. You know, I'm gonna try to pull some sponsors, and I'm gonna do this. I got a meeting with this company, that company, some big name stuff. I'm not gonna throw it out there, but I got you know this, this, and this. And um, and I'm like, wow, that sounds you know. Ooh, and you know Seth's got these people and you know Seth's gonna get you an interview with this big time person in LA um I got all of this stuff like on on recording like so you know and I'm like oh, wow she's saying that she knows all these people like she is straight name dropping so many people in the industry that she knows and for me I'm like well you gotta be lying but if you're not lying, are these people really associated with somebody like you? Because now I'm about to start, start side-eyeing them. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you rock with her? Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, so I think um, that was just, that was just crazy. It was just too many things. It was like, this coming up, this coming up, this coming up, this coming up. It was like, how much can we try to get out of her? The more stuff I come up with. Because I'm thinking, even when I brought it up to her attention, I said, look, well, if you thought I was dope enough to do a cover, why didn't you just pitch the cover to me? Why don't you do the feature first and then the cover? And then, like, you're not even a smart businesswoman. You should have just came at me with the gusto. Like, Latrice, I want you to do the cover. You didn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, I think she's so cocky and so confident in her hustle that she's not realizing that, one, she's old now, and um, she's slipping. She's not as clean. She's not as clean as she used to be. She's sloppy now. Mm. Super sloppy. And she's in an area that she has no verse in. She does not know American law, American law. You would have to come out and scam and hustle and do all that stuff and flipping all that stuff. Like, come on. You doing all this getting dressed up and being all pretty and all this stuff, taking all this money from people for men who won't even give it to you they got you out here hustling for it (laughs) think about that Mm. you gotta hustle for the lifestyle you're trying to portray instead of being with someone genuine 
that would want to see you happy and would love to help you and cultivate yourself and help you build your business and help you build something positive so that they would be helping you get it and you can have it for yourself or they would give it to you because they love you that much. That's what I have. And that's why I win. You know what I mean? And so it's like, you're fake. You're not as dope as you think you are because you're still out here acting like a scavenger. You want the life that I actually have. And that's why you scam for it. Luke. <laughs> that's basically what it is. I think that's a great way to kind of like conclude this kind of conversation is that. Yeah, and she can try to get on and rip me and say all this and then whatever. I mean, she don't even know me. I only met you four months ago. You don't know anything about me. But what I can say is this. Um, she knows that I was genuine about what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a big name. I'm not all that. And I wasn't fronting like I was. I'm just me. This is my business. This is what I do. This is what I got going on. You want to feature me in a magazine? Cool. If you don't, I'm still going to do what I do. And I'm going to be happy and I'm going to live my life. Listen, I beat the biggest thing in my life. And I'm grateful for just having another day. God gave me lease on life. I'm happy to still be here to do what I am happy doing. That's what it's about. It's about happiness. It's not about you having the biggest car or the biggest crib or, you know, if you're in the VIP section and you're eating this and doing that. Like, even when I'm speaking to her, she, that's, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that, that, that's her DNA. Like, it's just all about that. I'm like, you're a fucking walking Instagram story. Like, that's ridiculous. You, you know what I mean? Like, have a real life. And that's what it comes down to. It, it's it's really a psychological disorder for for someone like that. Um, going going into that, not too deep, but I think that's one of the downfalls um, in in all societies across the board with social media. It creates a massive uh, deficit in delusion. Mm. And um, and I mean, Murad, you know, I mean, this is this is what you study, you know, in yourself. So I study clinical psychology and neuroscience. Yeah, and yeah. So I mean, you 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 know, I and it, it differently. Yeah, right. It is like really, and and so you're just as bad as these platforms that are out here already influencing these young girls because now you're emulating what they see, mm. and you're live, which makes it worse because now they really think it can happen. You know what I mean? I see her. She's driving that. Mm. She's taking me here to go eat. And it, the thing about it, when I was in London and it was my first trip in London, you know, she did that whole, let me take you around thing. One, I still have four days left in France. Right. So if I wanted to stay in London, I could have. Right. I sent it one day just because of travel. And I had a meeting with, with another um, business partner of mine in London. So I, I extended it. So she took the opportunity. She wants to take me in Selfridges. She wants to do that. Girl, I'm from New York. I'm not impressed by no damn Selfridges. Listen, and then she's like, let's go eat here. Let's do that. And let's, you know, in London and London and London. And I'm like, listen, London's cool. London's great. But it's the way that she was presenting herself like she was trying to impress me. That's the grooming phase. Right. That's the grooming phase. She was trying to groom me. Let me take you here. Let me take you here. We can have a spa day here. We can do this. Honey, my gym is a spa. I'm not impressed about this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, I just let her do it. You know, just let her hang herself. You know, because I'm not, the, the one thing about me and my personality is that I'm not very easily impressed. But I was easily fooled with her authenticity because I really, really am about business. Like, I really wanted, th I really wanted this. You know, that was, that was my goal. I really wanted this. And I made a decision out of emotion. And I had that conversation with someone very near and dear to me. And I will not do that again. That is a lesson that I've learned not to make business decisions and incorporate it with emotion. That was one of the wisest pieces of information that I have gathered out of this whole entire ordeal, because that's what she uses to play on. And that's how she accumulates her victims. I'm telling you, ladies, listen to my tips. If someone's reaching out to you and especially off of social media and it's this whole get to know and, and they want to do this whole runabout thing and, you know, digging and getting more information out of you, they are sizing you up. 
That's what it is. It's not genuine interest. It is them accumulating information on how they are going to attack you, their form of attack, which way, how far they can go. They're trying to gauge you. I'm smarter than her because I gave her niblets. I gave her niblets and I even played into her emotional card, dropped the little emotional gems on her. I gave her a little emo moment, you know, having a little moment, things like that, where she feels like she's coming in, she's coursing me. Oh, oh Latrice, and you know, I'm just, you know, cause I'm on your side and all that. Gaining her confidence, the same way that she tries to gain her victim's confidence. I did it to her. I gave her a taste of her old medicine, pretty much. And yeah, you got a little bit of money. Woohoo, hurrah. But you didn't get everything. Right. You didn't get everything. And you didn't say, oh, I hit that lick. Change the number. We're not answering her no more. You don't get the opportunity to say that about me. You don't. And so I just want to take my experience in that. And, and hopefully these tips can help someone else. Because they're going to still be out trying to trying to hit people up. You know, they're going to still be out because what they do is they hit the small business owners or the emerging business owners and people that are just starting out and present like this grandiose opportunity to them. And they're thinking, wow, this could be my big break. This could be what's going to be positive for me to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's how she presents herself. Right. She gets the money from these small companies and then she goes and she funnels it in to either her lavish lifestyle or trying to maintain her business and then she'll get bigger people that are in the industry and use it for that like she'll get a prominent celebrity or something on a on a interview or on a magazine cover or something like that to just to keep her appearances up you know what i'm saying just to keep it keep it up so that she can grab the next small business owner i see her whole program and it, and you know it's one thing if you know it's, it's everything is terrible. You shouldn't be doing anything terrible. But if you know, you got your hand caught in the cookie jar once or twice in your life or whatever, that's something different. But when you are out here like preying on people, you are literally like preying on people. Like that's, you got a whole operation. Like that's just crazy. But I will say, um, I will say this. Um, they used to a million videos being done or whatever it is and, and whatever the case may be. But I'm just good. I, I just, you know, just look out for them. That's it. Life goes on. Life goes on. But thank you so much for committing your time to this. I really appreciate it. And I think that the girls watching this, or boys watching this, that could be under her wing, you know, would definitely find this useful. 110%. 110%. So I want to really thank you for taking the time out of your day for this. And very happy to give you a platform to, you know, allow people to hear your story for what it is because I feel like you deserve that based on what you've gone through. Thank you, Murad. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I think, um, you know, it, 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 for the most part, you know, I'm still going to move forward in my business and, and, and still, you know, providing that platform that I want to do for designers and, and you know, in my story, because I don't want this being my story because it's not, it's not even a fraction of my story. Right. My story, how I beat cancer, how I did this, how I've gotten all of these things in my life and, and, this is what helped me. You know, my mother, my late mom is the one who helped me cultivate my company and, and all those things. So it, that is the more positive approach that I want to do. I don't want to be like her when she's trying to use her bad decisions in life and calculate it as is, if it was a misfortune and mislead people. That is the difference. So. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No worries. Have a nice day. Bye. You too.